Hello and welcome back to another episode of my Factorial 1.0 tutorial Let's Play on Exterminator and thank you for joining me here again and uh, we have some stuff on the agenda today. The first one, uh, someone had a comment in last episode which is an excellent point uh, that I have all this wood in my inventory. Uh, you may end up with a similar situation. Uh, it is something that collects in your inventory quite a bit and uh, the suggestion was to put this in our boilers or in our furnaces. Uh, now you can't put uh, two types of fuel in at once and you can't replace it without pulling the other fuel out So I just tried to control click over this and it won't let me uh, So this is something to keep in mind. It's a little bit difficult to do because that means I have to pull the coal out uh, However, we have these that are not actually on at all yet. I can dump some in there uh, Which is good. We also have a fair bit of coal which we can I'm gonna actually control right click to do half a stack at once and I'm gonna keep a little bit I do like to keep a little bit of coal in my inventory just in case we need some emergency fuel or something, uh, you know, in a car or some such fuel boiler for a minute or two. And uh, we now have this, and there's a few things I'd like to accomplish today. Uh, I would like to continue work on our rail line to try to get this brought over to coal. Uh, now, another comment that I saw in last episode was someone suggested to landfill across this lake. I wasn't sure specifically where they meant, if they meant here or maybe just connect this and come across, uh, which is certainly a possibility, although it does kind of put our coal in an area that we don't really need it to be in. Uh, we, we would prefer it to be up here. Uh, we could landfill here and, uh, and just go straight here instead of coming around, but it's not that much of a detour, and landfill really is quite expensive. Uh, landfilling this much, even at a train uh, rail length or width, uh, it would be quite a lot of stone. If, if we... Uh, Go into landfill here and take a look. Uh, this is 20 stone per one landfill. Uh, and the way landfill works is a little bit odd. It seems to take uh, a bit more than than uh, the amount you would think. So if we're trying to make like a two tile wide thing, uh, for it to actually work properly, it seems to take more than two to do that, at least in my experience. Um, so uh, I, I think I would just rather go around the lake in this case. I'm just collecting some steel here since we will need that for some things. And uh, I'm going to grab a little bit more rail because I think, oh, unfortunately, we actually don't have any more rail. We are quite low here on, it uh, looks like steel is our primary bottleneck. So perhaps we should fix that as well. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let, let, let's just continue working on our rail. I think, I think there's a lot that can still be done with that, even with this uh, limited amount that we do have. So... Uh, maybe we can just touch on our little our steel production as we walk by it here. Uh, we do notice that uh, the issue is ore at, at the current point, uh, just because it's it's really not making it past this part. Uh, so we could uh, turn all this into red belt, which would be uh, a little bit of a pain, a, a bit of a problem, uh, just because it's it's very expensive. Uh, we can make some of it red belt. Uh, one thing you'll find out and that I kind of want to demonstrate is you can you can get away with making only sections of, of things red belt uh, depending on the situation because uh, just the extra speed to get it uh, to a certain point actually does manage to push it down the line uh, a bit farther uh, rather than having to make the entire line red belt uh, you can see it's now actually making it to these uh, some of these and we've just upgraded a section, so that will help maybe a tiny bit. Ideally, we will bring it to Red Belt, maybe to about here-ish or here. Uh, but uh, just making it to there does help just a little bit. I don't really want to handcraft all the remaining gears for that, so we're just going to continue on our way here. Uh, now, in regards to rails, uh, there's a, another thing I want to mention, which was brought up in the comments. And I will be completely honest with you guys. I did not actually realize this was a setting. Uh, I've never looked into it. I don't know how new it is. Maybe it's always been there. There's so many settings in Factorio, uh, as, as you may have found out by, by looking in the settings menus, uh, that it's easy to overlook things. Uh, and one of those is I mentioned the train visualization indicator here when you mouse over a station or just put something that would you know require that, like an inserter, you put that in your hand. Uh, and it shows five here. It shows the three and then two more. And, you know, I said that can be a little bit of a problem because it doesn't show more. There is actually a setting. If we go into settings and interface down here uh, under other, 
uh, there's this one right here show or this train visualization length five you can jump this all the way up to 12. Uh, you can't go any higher than that 12 is the max so i try to go to 13 i think it, it will just default to one so we could go to 12 which is pretty cool so thank you for pointing that out like i said i was not actually aware of that now when we do this you know this points this goes all the way out there so this is a very very large train uh, i'm going to set it back just a little bit so it's not quite as confusing i think like in our case maybe like eight is uh sufficient here that's a pretty decent length right there and uh, we're going to take our locomotive put it down throw some coal in each one and uh, before we continue our rail i do want to touch on what i mentioned last episode in regards to the two types of trains you can build the type i'm building right now with a locomotive on each end and then the type where you have a locomotive on just one end and you do kind of a pull through setup and like i said uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to both, and I suppose we could just cover those here uh, fairly briefly before we continue our rail. I do want to get some rail work done. Uh, I prefer this kind, and the advantage to this kind is, in my opinion, it's easier to understand. That is just my personal, uh, the, the way my mind works. Again, some people are completely the opposite. I've talked to people who would just say, it's way easier for them to set up the other kind. And I think that's more of a personal thing. So personally, I find this a lot easier to build with and understand when it can just pull in and then pull back out the way it came. And also, uh, this uses less rail room, uh, in my opinion, because uh, it can just use the rail it pulled in on. Whereas if you have it pull through, you need to add all this additional rail to every single one of your stations uh, to let it pull through and turn around basically and come back out and connect uh which you can you know you can make it fairly small like i mean there's a limit you know the smallest i i could do would be something maybe you know maybe make it a little smaller than that but something kind of like that so it does use the same rail to a degree uh but you are requiring a way for it to turn around uh now if you're uh, going to have multiple trains come in, then you may actually want to bring this out and have it connect farther up, like past your station, because uh, I consider basically from the station back to here to be the entire station, so having it pull back out uh, like here is not great, in my opinion, because, you know, maybe you have, you know, another train waiting that could be in the way. Uh, so uh, that's, that's the advantages I, I see. It, it's just personally I find it easier to understand and build with. Uh, and it takes less rail room. Uh, now, there used to be some more issues with it, but they're not really relevant anymore. Uh, now, the advantage, of course, to having just a one-headed train without this uh, is, one, uh, it's actually uh, it's a little more efficient because you actually have less of a train, uh, right? You're, you're short one locomotive. You're, you're, you don't have as many locomotives which takes less weight off the train. So weight, uh, trains do have weight in, in the top speed of them, or rather, sorry, the acceleration of them uh, is affected by the, the weight of them. So, you know, a bigger train, of course, is going to take longer to accelerate up to its top speed and such. Uh, so, you know, that's just something to kind of consider there is that uh, it, it can be just quicker to, uh, you know, to just have one. And again, some people just find that easier to just to just build it this way. Um, and there's some other advantages with, which we'll touch on later. They're a bit more for later uh, bigger bases that is just not really relevant here. Uh, so again, I do like to build this way. Uh, so all the things you will see here are going to be built with this type of train in mind. And another thing I want to mention as we continue this rail is right now, um, Look, looks like we can go intercept these guys at the pass here before he even touched me. Yeah, I think they're definitely, I think they're coming from uh, this base over here. Uh, we did finish our tank research, so we could work on that once we grab some more engines and steel. Uh, but right now, uh, just for the sake of, uh, you know, being quick and not spending a ton of time for a resource that we will need here in the very near future, uh, I am just building one lane. Uh, I'm building just one track from point A to point B. 
Uh, this is okay for this situation, and it's okay even once you get a couple more trains if they're going different places and using different rails. However, something I want to uh, very, very heavily emphasize here is I would highly, highly recommend against doing this and trying to put multiple trains on this. Even, even if they are going to the same places, say I wanted two trains bringing coal for, uh, from this coal patch up here to the station, having multiple trains using one lane is extremely problematic. In fact, it just will not work unless you put in some sort of bypass because obviously, as you uh, might imagine, uh, there is only one rail and trains can't just pass through each other uh, so they won't work uh, because, you know, without some sort of bypass because, you know, a train will be coming down this way and the other train needs to go up the other way and, and there's no possible way for them to pass unless you do some sort of pullover like this or or you could do something like that maybe at a station uh, but then it has to wait till it gets to that station to actually pass each other. Um, so you can do things like this. Uh, you can do some signaling. Uh, also, the signaling becomes a little trickier in situations. Um, so I do want to emphasize that although I am building just one rail, it's primarily just for simplicity at this point, and because uh, there there are uh, two lane systems I like to use, uh, but they are fairly extensive to build without using robots, um, and and we don't have robots quite yet. So building those by hand is just something I very much want to avoid at the moment, and we really only need coal currently. So I'm fine with just with doing one rail and one train. And like I said, if you want, you could do this for multiple trains, just keep the rail separate. Like say I wanted, uh, you know, more copper, I could have another one lane thing going from this copper over here, well, vice versa rather, from here to here, and just have it be its own thing, just as like, this is its own thing. Uh, just don't mix them. But that does get very inefficient and complicated the more you try to add, because then some are crossing without proper junctions, and uh, well, it becomes just a, a big problem, a big mess, really. Uh, so we will work on a much larger, uh, you know, better, more finished uh, two-lane system uh, here in the near future. Once we get robots, it will be significantly easier to build with robots. Uh, so we're going to do that. And as you can see, we're actually building in a diagonal. This is something you can do. Uh, that there's really no issue with this. Uh, I, you know, in this case, it, it just actually makes things a little cleaner instead of having to zigzag back and forth up here. So I'm going to come up. I'm going to I want to try to avoid that water, but also avoid this cliff if, if at all possible. I'm going to hit these trees, which is fine. And I think I'm going to call my train up here just so I can kind of build while I'm on the train. And this is an excellent opportunity to show you a fantastic feature, which is fairly new. It's not new in 1.0, but it is fairly new. Uh, if you and some people who have maybe played the game before who aren't brand new may not know this if you haven't played for a while. Uh, is you can create temporary stations. And what this does is this is just basically creates a, a checkpoint for a train to go to, just a temporary call point for the train to go to. And this is a very easy way to call a train. Previously, what you would have to do is I would have to actually place a station here and then go to the train and tell it to come to the station and then pick up the station when I'm done, etc., etc. But now, you click on a train and you hold control over a rail and you can see that green line and I can just click and that's it. I don't need to set down a station. I don't need to assign a station and it, you can see temporary and it is going to come to exactly where I told it to come. There's no visualization or anything here. Uh, so do be careful. You don't stand too close to it and it will just stop. And there we go. And it's done. And it just automatically gives the condition of five seconds past. Uh, now, if it had somewhere else to go, it would, uh, as far as I know, continue on to that point. Of course, it has no other place in its destination at this time, but uh, it would then continue on. So, uh, in fact, we can just very quickly together test that if I go here uh, and let's just stop that. Uh, I just want to test here really quick. If we come here and tell it to go here, uh, once it reaches that, I am interested to see if it does actually, after the five seconds, if it does actually then turn around and go back to where it was supposed to go and it does so yeah I just wanted to confirm that I wasn't crazy that was in fact what it did um, and 
we have that. And I will show you the whole scheduling system here once we get the other station down. But now we can drive this. And, uh, and that's just a really, really nice feature to kind of bring trains to you or send them somewhere else temporarily. Uh, you know, maybe you just need to get them off a track or something and you already have a bypass. You can just set up a temporary station instead of having to walk over there and set up a station or manually drive them. And you can see I can do this while I'm driving the train. Now, of course, if we hit a rock or tree or some such, we will probably have to get out and clear it. Uh, I think, actually, I wanted to come a little closer over here. I think actually here would probably be a good time to make this turn. And you can see I can build a little ways out. There was I was getting the air of not being able to reach right there. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of, just so I don't have to keep hopping in and out, just kind of kind of come up here and clear some things that might be in the path. Uh, we are going to run out of rail very soon here. We only have 43. And I am holding off on science a little bit because uh, I would like the rails to build up. Uh, if we continue doing science, of course, they're going to be used for the science, uh, which is all well and good normally. Uh, but we do actually need rail to complete this setup. Uh, I could handcraft rail, but it's a little bit of a pain. And uh, we're just going to walk down here. Excuse me, grab anything, any other rail. And actually, let's grab some engines and make ourselves a tank. Uh, while we're at it, we can maybe uh, demonstrate some stuff with the tank here. Uh, it looks like there's still no rail, which is a bit of a problem. This, the purple science is nearly backed up. It's very, very close to being backed up here. Um, so we should be able to start collecting rail here in the very near future. Uh, I think I'm just going to kind of grab what I can from this. Just kind of stand here and hold F and wait for this. Uh, steel, of course, is still the issue. Uh, I can also craft some rail if I need to. Uh, let's check on the steel. Let's come over here. So you can see now this is actually working completely. That little bit of red belt actually accomplished uh, even more than I thought it would. And if we want to see exactly what rate we're making steel, we can hit P to come into production. I like to look at the one minute graph just because this since it's so short, it's a five second, it jumps around so much. It's very hard to track what you're looking for. Uh, that was an accident there. Uh, and we can look, we could isolate it, but it's pretty easy. Uh, about 105, 110 a minute here, uh, which is not a lot. Uh, but I bet if we looked, I don't know if the last 10 minutes will show it. Uh, it maybe did. Maybe this is it right here. Uh, last hour. Yeah, I think this might be it, where we added that red belt. So that's pretty good. Let's grab some engines. Of course, taking these engines is going to put a little more strain on our steel, seeing as they do take steel. Uh, and then we just need some iron and, of course, steel. And we'll go ahead and make a tank. So the tank is very much like a car. I don't even know if we've demonstrated a car yet. I don't think we have. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It drives just with uh, the intuitive keys of th the same keys you walk with, WASD. And uh, the one good thing about a tank, and I don't know if there's a base out here. Uh, there is actually maybe a base over there we could destroy. We really do need to get rid of this one, but it's kind of in the opposite direction of where we're trying to go. Let's grab some ammunition, and then we may go destroy that big base, because once we build on that coal patch, the miners will produce pollution and they will probably fairly quickly start aggravating that base and creating quite a few problems for us. Uh, so the advantage of the tank is, well, it's a tank, which means it's going to be a lot more durable, uh, significantly more durable. It has uh, more resistances, more health. Um, the tank has 2,000 health here. I don't recall exactly what a car has. I could build a car as well, I suppose. Doesn't hurt to have multiple vehicles. I typically end up losing them quite frequently. Uh, so this has 450 health. This has more than four times the health as a car. And resistances as well. It doesn't show resistances, but it does have more. Uh, and then it has uh, the ability to use a flamethrower, a machine gun, and a take tank cannon. Um, now we can make tank shells if we wanted to. Uh, it would require some explosives, which we've not made, so we won't bother with that at the current moment. Uh, they're decent. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's nothing bad about them at all. Uh, they work pretty well. I personally prefer the more prefer the more direct method of just ramming the bases. And 
this this is the other fantastic thing about the tank uh, you can just drive into the bases and into the worms and destroy them uh, simply by impact now it does of course deal some damage to the tank uh, just based on the impact however uh, it it really is just better in, in a lot of cases to, to just ram into them rather than trying to shoot them of course it conserves ammunition as well Let's see where we kind of want to go with this here uh, I, don't, I really wanted to come straight and then over uh, going through this forest is a bit of a pain we can come over and then maybe load here although I really do like the idea of coming straight up I'm gonna clear this we could go around it just a little bit more messy um, and I do want to demonstrate this tank because it's not only effective it's very satisfying and uh, with the car though I, I do want to mention as you may have guessed do not try this with the car uh, it like I said it's very squishy you will you will kill you will destroy the car pretty much instantly and then you will likely die so I would definitely say uh, this is this is only viable with the tank I, I've made a poison capsule here just to help out I'm not quite sure it's a little hard to tell from here how many worms there may be in here on the map it kind of blends together uh, I did make two more defender capsules which as we discovered last episode are actually pretty decent uh, with the you know some ammunition upgrades that we have and uh, stuff like that I'm gonna just start handcrafting more rail because we're gonna be doing combat anyway so we can just let ourselves handcraft you can rotate vehicles once you play or before you place them rather quite easily and we're going to stick so we can shift click I'm shift right clicking in this case to put half the ammo in here and I'm gonna take some ammo from here as well uh, I'm gonna switch to my layout of this uh, now you can combine the turret strategy I was using uh, last episode and, and a few episodes before that with the with the tank uh, which can work quite well it's a little difficult because driving do is a little bit hard you know it's obviously not nearly as precise as walking and wow look at this oil patch 5800 uh, so here's actually a more immediate threat uh, we have medium worms here so this is going to be there is a potential we're going to die um, I'm gonna hit tab here to switch my weapon over and uh, I'm going to try not to bother with the turrets because I'm likely going to lose them. I'm going to try just the strategy of ramming them and having these guys out and using some poison capsules for the worms. As you can see, I am just hitting this. Now, you can shoot at the same time, which of course makes it even more effective. Um, but when I just hit the bases, it, it squashes them quite well. And... We have another coal patch here. Now these guys' life is not going to last super long. They only last 45 seconds. I'd very much like to take advantage of this and try to go destroy this base, although uh, not repairing is extremely dangerous. And probably I should just take a second to repair. We, we may lose these guys. In fact, even with these... Oh yeah, they're gone. So, um, I actually am not confident taking on this base there are a lot of worms and the worms will do a fairly heavy amount of damage to you uh, however this fighter base actually it's probably of equal size but if it's smaller I do want to destroy it um, and then we can start working on our patch here I'm gonna start crafting this does require we are have hand making some gears but again we're not really doing anything else at the moment since we're in combat so this is a, a thing you can take advantage of, is if you're in combat, or just very intent, intently building things, uh, you can... Oh my goodness, so many worms. There's a base over here too. Actually, that may just be worms. Mm, there's one base, we might as well destroy it. Um, if you're like really intently building things, or in combat, uh, you can just craft stuff, you know, and even if you have to make a lot of intermediates, that's okay. And there we go. So I'm just holding space, just like normal combat. And uh, I think we can probably take this on. I'm going to stop for just one short second and uh, get one more repair in here. Uh, it is, again, it is possible we're going to die here. This is a very large amount of worms. This is a frightening amount of worms. I'm actually going to focus on just running down the worms here. 
Um, you will notice you can get stuck as well, so I'm actually going to not hit any more worms and try to get out of here because, of course, every time you hit them, you slow down. And uh, this can definitely result in death, as you saw. So I managed to kill another spawner, which is good. It will reduce the amount of enemies spawning. And uh, sometimes you will just have to take uh, several passes at, at bases. I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and just repair this up and take one more pass at it, and then we will continue our rail. Uh, we certainly should be able to take care of it here. Uh, so I know we're doing a lot of combat, and again, it's not the most interesting thing. It can get old. Uh, I am showing you in an episode. Oh, hey, destroy 10. Oh, there's an achievement. Um, I am showing you in an episode purely because uh, the tank is an extremely powerful tool to um, you know, destroy bases with and push with. And uh, I just wanted to show you just how good it can be. But some of the downfalls, you know, uh, one thing you do want to be very careful of is do not get surrounded or trapped because... Uh, you can plow th through things quite easily if you have momentum. However, if you get surrounded, like you hit a worm and you don't quite kill it on the first impact or you just get massively slowed and then surrounded, um, it can be extremely hard or sometimes just not possible to start moving again because you don't have that momentum and the biters are just blocking your path completely. Uh, and that can get you killed. That's usually how I die in a tank, honestly, is when that happens. So... That's, uh, that's just something to keep in mind is, is try to be careful with, with that is make sure you have your full momentum going in. Make sure you don't stop. I, I pretty much am always just holding the acceleration, the forward button when I'm doing this. Even though it may not look like it, it's because I am getting slowed down. So you can, uh, you can imagine how much of a problem it would be if you weren't constantly trying to accelerate. Uh, so we're going to bring this rail up and we're going to come over to over here. It's about, I want to uh, come down a bit from the patch. Uh, just so we have room to set up all of our, you know, our loading and, and all that. So we can kind of just measure where we're at. And this seems like a decent enough distance right there. Uh, so I'm going to just build this out. Now, if we really wanted to know, we could take advantage of the copy-paste tool. Um, and, and I actually will do that. Is I'm just going to click here. And uh, you, can only still, you can only do this where you have vision. So it does, of course, make it a bit more difficult but uh th this gives us a good idea of where we're at and this should give us more than enough room to set up our loaders and any balancers we may need and stuff uh, away from the path so we're going to head back down to the base one last time here and pick up rail which surely there should be rail at this point since we haven't been doing any research and uh, i will go ahead and add the station so we can kind of cover stations uh another thing to cover there is a lot to cover with trans guys so i know this is a lot of information uh, with trains, and I will try to cover it multiple times, some of it, since there is a lot. Uh, you have this map view here, which I showed you for the temporary stations. You can use it just like a normal map. You can pull it, you know, hold your mouse and move it around. You can zoom in and out. Uh, you cannot zoom, like, all the way into as if you were in a player view, like you can in the normal map. Uh, but you do have this option, at least. This gives you some information. Control click to insert temporary station. Shift click to add the selected stop to the schedule. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so we're going to click on this and we're going to rename it first of all. Uh, you can just click that little pencil button and we're going to call this, you can call it whatever you want. We're going to call it, uh, call DO for drop off and hit apply. And you can change all the colors here with these color sliders. Right now it's just red. And, uh, if we really want to get fancy, we could make it like black. That's not black. How do we get, what is black? Black should be, is it just everything down? Yeah, that's black-ish, Cole's black. I mean, it's kind of gray, but that's the best we can do at the moment. We add in a little red, perhaps, a little blue. Uh, maybe like that. You can mess around with it, or you can just put in the exact values. So we can click on this, and then if we go to add station, it'll list all the stations. And some may be in red, which means they're not accessible. Of course, this one is. So we click here, you can also search for stations. And we click it, and it adds it to the schedule. Uh, then you have options, and you will need to add some sort of option for a wait condition. So this is uh, 
what kind of condition there is for the train uh, in regards to uh, when it leaves the station or how long it waits at the station. So you can click on this and there's many, many different options. There's a time pass option, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can just click it and you can set, you can click on here and just say 30 seconds past, 120, you know, 10, 11, whatever you want. You can type in here as well, which is quite nice to say 43 and you can just click these to remove them. Uh, inactivity is very similar, but based on inactivity. So you can say like five seconds of no in, no activity within the train's cargo. So, you know, if it's full, then inserters won't be inserting into it or, or liquid won't be pumping out of it. If it's, you know, if it's empty or full, depending which way you're going. And uh, basically it's just saying if there's no activity happening within the cargo, like within the train, um, stuff being moved in and out, then, then the condition is met there is an activity and then it will send it off based on how many seconds. Full cargo, empty cargo, completely self-explanatory. One thing I wanna mention really quickly and we'll show this more extensively later. Uh, you need to be very careful with these if you're transporting liquids and solids. So if you have a train that is uh, cargo wagons transporting solids and also a liquid wagon on the same train transporting liquids, uh, this is gonna create some issues usually because the two may not match up and this counts the entire cargo, not per type. So maybe you want like the uh, you maybe you want it to leave when the solids are empty, but the liquids may not be empty, so it could be sitting there forever or for a very long time. Um, so you, there are some way, definitely ways to get around that, but just keep that in mind. Uh, item count you can base it off of just an item count. So if I wanted to say, uh, you know, you stay at the coal drop off until coal is less than a thousand in the cargo wagon. Uh, then it will obey, obey that and it will sit there until coal drops below a thousand and then it will leave And you can just much like we did with you know combinators and stuff That we showed previously you can just click on here. It'll bring up everything in the game. You can base it on and uh, Then you can just select what you want and do all the same signals We went through with the combinators in a previous episode and then set a number and close that and uh, fluid count, exactly the same, but with fluids. Surrogate condition, um, which is a bit too complicated to cover now. There are some really, really cool things you can do with this, which I probably will show you later. There's some simple things that are quite nice. Um, this is like connecting the surrogate network to the station and stuff. Not really gonna mess with that right now or for quite a while. Uh, you can set it based on passenger present or passenger not present, and there we go. So for this application, we can do the simplest of all of them, which is empty. And uh, we want it empty because we want it to stay there until it's empty. We want it to say, you know, I can leave once I'm empty. And then once we place the station over here, we'll do the opposite of full, right? Because we want it to stay there until it's full. And we can just click this button and it will automatically take us to the station. And uh, it'll show us the path as well that's taking, which is quite nice. Uh, much like the stations, you can color trains as well. So if I wanted to say color this i don't remember what set the other one i want to say like 10 or 11 bl blue on this I'd say like 11 maybe uh, we can check the station uh, but now this train or at least this locomotive um is uh is is the correct color it's black and you can copy paste colors as well which is super nice so you can you side is just like the copy paste throughout the rest of the game shift right click to copy shift left click to paste uh, which can be very nice you can do the same with stations Okay, so this was 18. Let's just change that to match. Usually I don't color my trains until much later in the game, but uh, just to show you. Uh, now this condition has been met. You can see here it's green. It'll show you, uh, you know, this green bar will actually move based on the condition. So as it empties, this will go down. Uh, but since there's nowhere else for it to go, it's not going. If there were another station, it would have left already. Uh, but there's of course no other station yet for it to go to. So that's the scheduling. It's a little complicated, but and you can mix and mask match conditions with I, which I didn't really show you. That gets a bit more advanced. Um, I can show you very briefly once we get back here, uh, and it's probably almost time to end this episode, in fact. But um, you can do and or settings. So you can say like uh, five seconds of inactivity or less than a thousand coal or you can have two conditions at once met with the and uh, condition. Um, so you, you can do a lot of different things with the train scheduling and conditions to pretty much get almost any combination you want. 
uh, and that's also where the circuit comes in, the circuit condition. Uh, that will basically just close out the the remaining amount of options you would need. So like, if there's something you can't do with the normal ones, you can likely do it with circuits. Um, the circuits just let you be extremely precise, very specific with what you want to do. Uh, it can get really crazy. I built some mega bases before that utilize it um, very nicely. That again, that's very very late. Most of the time, I almost never even use it because you can pretty much always, almost always, accomplish in a normal base what you want uh, with the with just the preset easy conditions. Um, but if you're someone who, even if you're new to the game, you know some people are just just understand circuit stuff. You know, understand the logic stuff super easily and are super interested in that and if that's you then definitely I recommend looking into it um, and I will show you it a bit later on uh, because you can do some very very cool things with it uh, so we have the rest of the rail just to show you here though uh, if you add a, so to get the and or up you need to add a second condition so if we say um, an activity we now have this option you can just click it to switch bef between or and so we could say empty cargo or five seconds of inactivity, um, which is not that uncommon of a combination really. Uh, for this, I'm just going to do empty, but uh, this is how you do this. So you could have both met, which doesn't really make sense in this particular case. Um, I mean, once it's empty, there will be inactivity, but you might as well just have it leave on empty. So, um, and then you can just add more stations. You know, again, once we have more, they'll show up and then you can add separate conditions for each one. Uh, of course, you can toggle it between automatic and manual, and then the fuel is just like the fuel in anything else. Uh, so let's just hop in here really quick, and I'm going to again take advantage of the temporary station and just shift click, sorry, control click. Those mixed up. Control click to here, it does tell you. Um, now, you can manually drive these just like a vehicle. Uh, there's, you know, W and S for up and down, and then if there happens to be a turn, you can use the A and D keys. Uh, if you do happen to do that, uh, I would recommend you attempting to turn uh, a little bit before the turn. Otherwise, it probably won't make it. It won't turn. Uh, that's for later on. Mainly driving trains, though, on a full network is extremely dangerous. I uh, I have very much experience with this. Okay, he's left. That's not great. Uh, sir, let's just bring you back here. You can just quickly halt them in his tracks and bring him over here. And then... Uh, I'm going to just set them to manual for now. And you can clear these stations, these temporary stations, if you want. Just click the little X. Of course, you can clear any stations, but um, let's bring this over. And I think clear this rock. Bring this over. Yes, this gives us just about perfect amount of room. Might be a little tight, but we'll be okay. And I want to line this up so that it lines up with where our lines are coming down. Uh, this extra visualization does help a lot. So we have a... 1-2 train. Uh, the one-two train is a little bit smaller actually than I typically like. We may need to upscale this train here in the near future. Uh, but here we go. So I'm just kind of making sure these cargo wagons are generally lined up ish with the patch. You know, I may I you know probably don't want to have the station like way out here when your lines are gonna be somewhere over here, maybe. Um, and then you would have to drag them over. So just kind of lining it up is good. And we'll work on setting this up next episode. I'm quite confident we will be able to get this set up next episode. But like I said, there's a lot to cover with trains. Uh, it's going to be, you know, multi-episode covering things during each episode as they come up. Um, so while we may not have gotten a lot uh, physically done in the game uh, this episode, I hope we, you know, I hope I managed to cover a lot of stuff for you guys. Uh, just give you some more information on trains. And I'm going to just click on this station really quick. Name him. We're going to say... Coal one again. You can name these whatever makes sense to you. Um, I say I, I put numbers here because we're likely to have multiple coal outposts, um, and eventually you may have multiple coal drop-offs. But um, we will likely have multiple coal outposts that all deliver to the same stop later on. Before I would add multiple drop-off stations. Uh, and why don't we just color this so? Um, I still have that copy paste of the color, so I just shift left clicked to paste it on here, which is very nice. Um, and there we go. So now, just add this coal one, and we're going to do the opposite. Remember, we want a full cargo here. 
and we can just click this and it will come here and it will sit here now because it of course does not have a full cargo and it'll sit here and wait until it does so there we go that is uh we covered a lot of train stuff actually most of the, most of the important things we did cover with uh you know uh scheduling and stuff which can maybe be confusing at first uh ideally i may actually pull this back a little bit and uh We'll show some loading and stuff here. There's many, many different ways you can do loading. Um, I usually do a very simple version, uh, which works decent for a while. Uh, later on, you can even uh, kind of transport materials to uh, near the train with robots. That's much later. Uh, but I think that'll do it, guys. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. And uh, if you did, a like is much appreciated. So. Uh, can help other people find the video as well when they're searching and hopefully find it helpful too. And if you're new to the game, welcome. I hope you're having a blast and I hope these tutorials are helping you and you're just enjoying yourself uh, as much as much as I have playing the game. And if you're new to the channel, also welcome and feel free to subscribe if you aren't already to keep up with all the content coming out. And uh, I believe that'll do it. Any thoughts and questions, uh, do leave below. I will do my very best to read and answer them. Uh, sometimes I miss them just because YouTube's notification system seems to just randomly not uh, notify me of some. So uh, I will try my best, though. And thank you so much. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.